Flight is something that's deeply inspiring. Since mankind first walked out of a cave and looked up at the, what the birds could do, that extreme form of complete freedom. Stands on golden sand and watches the ships that go sailing somewhere beyond the sea. She's there watching for me. If I could fly like birds on high, then straight to her.
I've always been somebody who has been inspired by seeing potential ideas no one's gone and done and to wonder what it'd be like to get over that particular line. Mankind's attempts at flight up for the last hundred years have largely revolved around putting human beings inside flight vehicles. The challenge was, could we apply a different approach? Could we lean as much as possible on the brain as the flight control computer? Could we then add just the right amount of horsepower to get the human being off the ground, but also employ the arms to be able to manage and manipulate that power? What can I do right now that starts to get me on that road towards proving or disproving this concept? And for us, that was literally getting an aluminum tube that I could stick my arm in. And then within a few weeks, had one of these gas turbines mounted on that tube, and then there's the footage of us standing in a lane with a mop bucket with the fuel tank inside it, actually running this engine and feeling that power. That was the point when this went for an idea that it wasn't supposed to be possible, one that clearly was. Something that I think is responsible for why we've made such rapid progress is really all about learning from safe failure. 10 minutes from making a modification here in the lab, we can be out there testing it. And if that involves falling from a couple of feet onto either boarding or even concrete, you assess quickly what's the risk of that. If you're reasonably well padded and armoured up, then, then actually that's a risk worth taking. These gas turbines, the ones on my arms, they only weigh less than two kilos each. They put out 22 kilos of thrust each. The engine on the back is even more powerful than two put together. We're rolling with about 1,050 horsepower across the entire suit. So this is where I used to come with my father. I had that close time with my dad here. He would absolutely love this if he was around today. We're testing flying in some interesting, gusty and quite turbulent conditions. As you go, you stand, you're ready to take off, and you instigate start, you can hear six little solenoids tick over as the fuel valves open. The engines then build as more fuel goes in. You get to about 30,000 RPM, and that's a lot of noise. At that moment, you know there's no going back. You hold your arms out, you squeeze that trigger. So you lower your arms down, you feel the weight come off your feet gradually, gradually, until the ground disappears. And suddenly, despite being at the core of all of that fury, it goes peaceful. You simply just think about where you want to go and you just go there. It is unlike anything else I've ever experienced. Engineering is critical to nearly everything we rely on around us. It's a wonderful journey of creativity, of turning an idea, even a fanciful idea, into something tangible that actually can go and change people's lives. It's one of the most rewarding and amazing career paths that you can take.